for. All right, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and wherever you are in the world. Welcome to today's sharing of Harmonize to Energize. I hope you're all having a good day and you've had a good week. My name is Terry Matthews. I've been a practitioner of Jin Shin Jitsu for, gosh, I don't know, I think since 1991 at least, and practicing self-help since 1989. So it's um, one of the things I, I love to share is this whole self-help understanding of how the body can harmonize innately just when we place our fingers, hands on what we call safety energy locks on our bodies. And these safety energy locks, 26 of them left and right of the spine and in the arms, they're each uniquely the same size as the palm of your hand, diameter of your hand. And they act um, as resistors, like, like a resistor in an electric circuit. They will allow more energy or less energy through according to the resistance at the levels of your soul, of your mind, your heart, in your body. It's an energetic resistance. Um, the biggest culprit, <laughs> if you want to call it that, are our thoughts. Um, we can allow our destiny to be more in harmony. I don't want to get into the discussion about do we really have free will? That's a whole other discussion. But I do think we have a measure of control over how things evolve and grow within ourselves by the quality of our thoughts. Whether we can totally control our destiny, we get into the whole discussion of cause and effect, karma and this, that and the other, which may be for another time, but not today. So anyway, um, in the past few weeks, eight weeks, I think this is number eight, uh, seven weeks previously, we've been talking about how in Jin Shin Jitsu, we can balance the bust line region, the waistline region, and the hip line body, which represent bust line soul, um, <clears throat> mind at the waistline, and body at the hip line. How we can harmonize that in different areas of the body, different segmentations of the body and we would hold the safety energy locks that relate to those segmentations. And so what I'd like to do is to show you the map of the body as it's segmented into those areas. And here it is. And so basically that middle section there, the torso where it's divided 10, 13, 9, 14, uh, 215, and then in the arm, 19, by 19, 19, 18, 17, and so on and so forth. And the relationships are bus line, waistline, hip line, all the way down and all the way up the back as well. But of course, as you're going up the back, it's hip line, waistline, bus line. So um, today, to round it all up, to bring the threads together, we're going to combine as above the waistline and the waistline with below the waistline. And we'll do that by applying 11 and 15, 19 and one, and high 19 and high one. And we'll use these combinations as I am apt to do with the 36 breaths, four sets of nine and the Nine represents in numerology, the end of a cycle, beginning of a new. So each time we allow ourselves to let go of what we don't need and receive what we do, we can <clears throat> enhance our ability to move forward in our being. And after we've done this about nine breaths, the idea is we move on to the next level ever moving to, if you like, more purer, more whole levels of our being. And if we do this enough times, we can maintain 
the purity or the quality of the dimension that we find ourselves in. If that all sounds a little highfalutin and up there and there with the fairies, that's fine. Um, you have to practice to experience this work and practice can lead to progress and can lead to understanding. If our minds get in the way too much and we critically analyze too much, I have found we miss the bigger picture. Jin Shin Jitsu is an art and it's a feeling art. It's an art of compassion, which we feel in our hearts. And the heart meridian or pathway moves its energy all the way through us to every organ function and deep into the brain. It represents the wisdom factor, the collection of knowledge from unmanifest and manifest realms in the universe and beyond. All you need is love, said the Beatles, and that's about where I hold my truth. Whether I always practice it is another matter, but I enjoy practicing it. And enjoyment is where Safety Energy Lock 15 begins. We fill our hearts with joy and laughter. Safety Energy Lock 15 is here in the hip. And 11, which I think we mentioned last week, is where we <clears throat> let go of excess baggage. <laughs> baggage, did I say badges? Baggage. Um, Justice, the hub, balance, really, helping us balance. And what we're going to do is we're going to begin with 11 and 15 because those of you that have been following along may remember that I talked about how Mary taught it was a good idea to start with an escape route in the pathways of the body. So in other words, if you want energy to move down, you could push it by starting at the bus line region or you could pull it by starting at the hip line region. And really I think pulling is, is allowing the energy to drop down, escape from whatever resistance is at the bus line, waistline area. So we'll begin with 11 and 15, and then we'll go to the waistline area, 19 and one. And the 19 um, is here in the, elbow joint between the two tendons here. And it's authority and leadership. When you see people do this and they hold their back up straight, they may be trying to impress upon you they're in charge. Okay, but it balances the waistline and we're gonna connect opposites to opposites. There'll be one 19, whichever you choose, and it'll go to the opposite one. And the one is on the inside of the knee, the prime mover. And those of you that are familiar with Mary's teaching, Mary Burmeister's teaching, um, the one could be held for an hour a day or both ones to totally harmonize soul, heart, mind, and body uh, for a year. I, I haven't done that myself, um, but I'm sure she's right. She's incredibly wise. And uh, there wasn't much she didn't teach that didn't work, or at least. It all depends on what you mean by it didn't work. Um, maybe you just needed to do it a little bit longer because our resistances can be quite sneaky. So then we go from the, the waistline to the bus line and we use the high 19, which is the upper arm, with the opposite high one. So let me go through that again. We're going to do 11 and 15, so opposite hand on shoulder, the same side hand in the groin, whichever one you choose. It's good to check it out to see which one's tighter when you're not reading pulses. When we've done that for nine exhalation inhalations, we're going to go to the 19 and the opposite one in the knee, and then the high 19 and the opposite high one, which is really the thigh. We're going to do that, and that'll take us to 27 breaths. And then we'll in end by giving ourselves a hug by connecting our thumbs under the shoulder girdle and our fingers to the side of the shoulder blade, 24, um, 22 and 26, all complete. So let us begin. Um, 
to the new people, welcome, welcome, welcome. In Jin Shin Jitsu, a breath is a total body breath. It's a letting go from the back of the head, so Tianji Lock 4, the window that lets in more light, and down the front of the body and through that hip line 15, down to the big toe, which is so Tianji Lock 7, victory, perfect life power. We've moved from above to below, well done. And then we go from below all the way back up, and the seven goes to the two, 15 and two, life force for all creatures, number two, all the way back up to the window. And it does so in a spiral. And the spiral is always in a positive direction. Positive thoughts beget positive energy or positive energy begets positive thoughts, which came first, the chicken or the egg, but it's a positive spiral. And that's what we're looking to maintain because it creates harmony apparently in the universe when matter, energy moves in a clockwise direction. Energy is said to be by the quantum theorists, tiny matter, but it's that tiny that it takes a really strong um, microscope to actually see it. So it's actually tiny matter. Anyway, so that's another discussion completely. Let us begin the practice. So um, we're going to sit up straight, keep your back as straight as you can. Um, <clears throat> if you need support, put a cush on your tush or behind your back. Um, and then just place one hand on left shoulder or right shoulder, and the other hand in the, in the groin area, whichever one you've decided is, eh, I can't make up my mind, I'll stick with the left. I always like to emphasize the exhale on the left side does. And we're just going to close our eyes, gently drop our head in the form of a bow. And as we do that, the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which is either side of the neck, or it's actually pinned to either <clears throat> shoulder blade, will help open safety engine lock number four to let in more light. And we can smile as well, and that will um, additionally boost that. And as we exhale, there's no particular way in terms of nose, mouth, whatever becomes or is natural to you. And just gently exhale and allow energy to spiral down between the 11 and the 15 and beyond to the earth via the big toe and back up again. And once down the front and up the back is one breath. And we receive the breath. And as we receive, we receive cosmic purified energy, 360 degrees around us. Eight more times, here we go. You may notice, especially those who are familiar with energy work, that sooner or later you may feel a pulse at that 11 and at that 15. That suggests that the energy and blood are circulating there. The blood, of course, is that pulse, but it follows the energetic rhythm. So once the energy is communicating, you'll feel the blood pulse. No competing, no comparing. So if you don't feel that, don't worry about it. Just keep breathing out and receiving. The more we breathe out, have this sense of letting go of what you don't need, the dirt, dust and greasy grime, in order to build something new. And as you receive a breath, you're purifying all the way up back through the spine, through the energy centers, the chakras, in order to begin the cycle of letting go again.
11 and 15 is a wonderful practice for letting go because of the energy pathways. It is circulating or allowing to circulate. Circumventing. So if you have difficulties in letting go of anything, you know, if you hold on too long, perhaps, possessions, relationships, whatever, this might be beneficial. We can learn a lot from nature, the animal kingdom, different um, forms of nature, trees. Here we are in fall. The leaves are dropping. They're shedding their leaves and symbiotically feeding the ground beneath to allow another form of growth to happen. Kitties, the mother kitty will literally kick out her kittens after about I don't know, maybe four weeks, <laughs> um, or at least when they're ready um, to grow without mother being there all the time. They instinctively let them go to grow. Humans, on the other hand, often hold on to things, maybe longer than they need to. And when we hold on longer than we need to, the bigger labels that strike fear in people are more likely to develop. So, trust that by letting go, you will grow. And when you reach the ninth exhalation, inhalation, and then ending that cycle, we'll just slip into neutral before we begin the new cycle. And you can either stay with your hands where they are or just relax the shoulder and just drop the other hand into the groin. And notice if you feel like it, how you're feeling and where you're feeling. Maybe you've noticed certain areas of the body that are resisting the flow of energy. It's okay. Just need to practice a little bit more to allow that energy to um, transform the blockage. So now the um, <clears throat> waistline practice, 19 and opposite one. So find whichever 19 you wanna hold in there in the elbow joint between the two tendons on the outside. You can hold the 19, the opposite side on the ulnar side, but generally it's on the radial side. And then when you've done that, you're going to place your other hand on the opposite one, on the inside knee. And <clears throat> same process as before. Back straight, shoulders drop, head down slightly. Exhale. All the way down to the feet. Inhale. Receiving the breath. All the way back up to the head. And as that energy moves down, waking up the connection between 19 and 1.
And when we do this kind of opposite holding, we're activating the mediator, which the 19 um, is part of, so it's usually 19, and, and the one, two, they're all on the mediator flow. The binder that brings the energy left and right back to the spine. I don't know about you, but when I do these kinds of opposite practices, I do feel bound together a bit more, more connected. See what you feel. And when you reach the ninth exhalation inhalation, your metabolic rate might have been slower or faster than mine, no matter. Just sit and observe. Some of you may notice that you can experience what I like to describe as a breathless state, where it's so peaceful and you're not conscious of doing anything. That's great. That's the oneness experience. Hang in there as much as possible. And eventually one day it'll totally integrate into your being. And you won't know left, right, up and down, right, top, bottom. We'll just be all one. So the energy lock one. So with that, let's move to the high 19 and the opposite high one. Bus line accentuation and see which side feels more comfortable for you and we'll begin the third set of nine exhalation inhalations breathing out dropping shoulders allowing the spiral of light or life the circle of life to move on its natural path just like a pendulum swinging in a positive direction. Those of you that Dows will know what I'm talking about. And here at the bus line, you probably feel even more how tight we might be around the shoulders. Let yourself release in order to receive. Let those shoulder boulders melt. If the mind is chattering away, quietly remind it to 
but it should be on vacation. Off you go. And again, as you reach the ninth exhalation inhalation, just be the observer and the witness in that neutral zone, if you will. And these three practices can be done as a complete practice of moving energy from head to toe, toe to head, toe to head, head to toe. By themselves, they are opening up bus line, waistline, hip line, all complete. But to remind ourselves what we connect to with Jin Shin Jitsu, the bus line heart, the art of compassion, we do the hug and you hug yourself by bringing the thumbs underneath the shoulder girdle and the fingers to the side of the shoulder blades, left and right, or if it's uncomfortable, you can take whichever hand away and place it back on the 15 or that, that high one that some of you have not become familiar with until today. Whatever you feel to make yourself comfortable. And then just begin another nine exhalation inhalations. Connecting to the bus line here, the heart and lungs, I believe reminds us of this role that we play in allowing energy to come through us to share with others. It's best done with a sense of compassion and respect and love. Because of that dimension of energy, that frequency of energy is more healing. It's capable of removing more blockages because it's closely aligned with a harmonic of balance, universality, connection, truth, 
wisdom, humbleness, joy. Humbleness, I think, is a good one. We are ultimately, I believe, no better than any other part of the universe. We all collectively create the whole and we all have a role to play. So humbleness allows us to acknowledge that we are in service to a greater understanding, a greater dimension who wants us to be happy, who wants us to be in harmony, is built on those principles. So as you reach the ninth exhalation, inhalation, you can either keep your hands where they are a little longer if you feel comfortable that way, or just place them in the lap in the Sotangelo like 15 area. And notice how you feel. Sometimes, I often mention this, it takes more than 36 breaths to help us feel or maintain a sense of harmony. And that's okay too. Don't square your head about 36. Three and six is nine, and it's end of a cycle, beginning of a new, but it's also 108. So <clears throat> you can move forward with these practices at your speed and in your own way. Experiment if you're curious enough to do that. But the goal I believe is just to create more of a harmonic energy field within us and therefore without us. And when we practice in a larger group um, with everyone who's here today, that enhances the field. And sometimes that means eh, things come up even stronger. The experience is more intense. Yes, where many are gathered, there's a greater field. Just go with it, just breathe out. Oh, and by the way, if you ever need to lie down, there's no rule that says you can't lie, lie down doing Jin Shin Jitsu after all. When people receive Jin Shin Jitsu, nine times out of 10, they're on their backs, yes? <clears throat> so you can lay down or you can stand up and you can sit down and you can be in a half lotus or a full lotus. I've never tried doing it standing on my head, but that's because I can't stand on my head. But anyway, point is, follow nature's way, follow your heart, all of the messages that come from the purest part of your being. 
the heart being the center of emotions, sometimes the emotions feel a little dark. Breathe out and through, down to the ground, to mother nature, the earth, the mineral layer, the water. As mother earth, mother nature will take from us, will ground what we don't need and recycle it to something or some system that does need it. That's the whole symbiotic aspect of nature, I believe. It's an amazing, 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 beautiful, wondrous universe. And I don't think we've even scraped an inch of what it really is, the majesty of the universe. So good. Now, um, it's that um, time when I usually ask who's got a birthday or who's got a project they want to work on. But while you're thinking about that, I'll just, because um, I'm serious, um, who's got a birthday, who's got a project they want help with. I'm going to just show you what's happening in um, the courses in the Jin Shin Jitsu world. And coming up um, next Saturday is Jill Pasquinelli with Sarah Harper. And they're going to be teaching rebirth and renewal. Move that out of the way. The process of regeneration um, at 9 p.m. EST. Oh, I didn't see that one before. <laughs> it's normally two o'clock. Yeah. Make a note, folks. It's 9 p.m. EST. Interesting. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to double check that. But anyway. <laughs> They're going to be discussing the chest and toe flows, et cetera, et cetera. And you can register today for that amount. And yours truly, voila, is going to be your host. Harry, That's excuse it. me. Yeah. Have you said that 9 p.m. is incorrect? Yeah, it, it doesn't look right to me. Yeah. I don't know why that's happened. Um, yeah, well, because when you look on the ad, it actually says 2 p.m. So I need to talk to Casey and ask him to change that. 2 p.m., folks, we're back in business. <laughs> All right. And then if you've missed any offerings, um, here's the links for any classes that you'd like to review or see for the first time. Click on the link and take you to the different classes that have been taking place over the past three years. 20, 21, 20, yeah, yeah, three years. And the fee. All right. So that's that. And then we're back. Yeah, I was looking at that. I, like, I got to get up at six o'clock. I need to talk to Sarah and Jill. This, um, I, I, I'll ask for um, an increase. <laughs> no, but I think it's it's two o'clock. Yeah, <clears throat> which is more um, reasonable for everybody, probably. Okay, is there anybody out there in the wide world, the universe of Jin Shin that's currently um, on Zoom, who would like uh, either to receive a blessing because they're working on a project and they'd like a, a boost from us all, or it's their birthday, either was this week or will be next week before Friday, whatever. Um, speak up or forever hold your silence. And say, hold your breath. <laughs> uh, is there anyone there, Susan? Yes. Okay. I, I, I didn't speak up fast enough when it was my birthday. It was the same days as Becca's on the nine. And uh, I, 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 I had a, I couldn't make the end of the Zoom last week. So I would like to know if uh, I could have some support for a uh, liver project. Okay. And I believe uh, Diana and Alda. Okay, let's see what we're going to do here. Um, yeah, you have to, if you want to be spotlighted, and you don't have to be, but if you want to, you have to turn your camera on. Um, I realized that the other week. <laughs> uh, but I don't see Diana. Oh, yes, I do. Diana, there you are. Do you want to be spotlighted? Yes. 
But I look terrible. I hate seeing myself. <laughs> uh, well, you look fine here. I mean, everybody give her a yay. She looks fine. <laughs> oh, I have no makeup on. I've been cleaning. Oh, oh ladies, ladies, no makeup. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you look fine. Your, your thoughts are all that's important, if you ask me, that is. Um, and anyway, Alda, I know you're there, but you're not putting the camera on. That's fine. Okay, so we've got Susan um, working with a liver project and Diana working with. Yeah, I have severe health problems, including I was born with an immune deficiency and bleeding disorder. So if I get COVID, I'm gone. And then I haven't been able to work. So now I'm facing eviction because everything I apply for, um, for rental assistance, and I've never applied for help. So I think I have a blockage there where it's just not coming to me. But, you know, you apply and you wait a year and there's there's nothing. So I'm panicked. All right. So a lot going on, right? Yeah, so um, I, when, when those kinds of issues are compounding, you know, there's a lot going on. I definitely go to my heart and whatever practices, you know, you may do with your thought processes. Um, I heard you say you may be gone. I'm not suggesting that may not be true, <laughs> but can I suggest that you transform that thought and just say it is what it is i'm going to do my best to allow the energy to transform my situation for my highest good or something like that yes right. and i think i'm somehow blocking it because to ask for help for me is totally humiliating because i've always been even with severe health issues been the one helping other people yeah. Um, and I feel bad because I can't help myself and then I can't help anybody else. But I may be blocking help because I just feel so humiliated about it. Hmm. So I'm realizing that part of that just may be me having trouble accepting it, although I've gotten rejected so much. So I have, you know, asked for a lot of help. And people are mean when you're down and out, let me tell you. All right. So th there's, there's a lot of factors here. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of factors here. And, you know, we do meet obstacles and sometimes it's more intense. And, you know, getting support is part of what I believe um, helping us to move forward. So an opportunity like this, I'm glad you volunteered and I'm glad you're being very honest. It takes courage to be really honest and authentic. That's the beginning, in, in certainly in my understanding, of opening up the centers even more. Because if we hold back because we're frightened to reveal that situation, we're actually still blocking. Okay. And uh, we have to trust. And sometimes we have to risk that we won't be understood and that we will be rejected by some people. It is what it is, and as it is, it is, is a famous phrase that I now need to remind the Jin Shinjitsu family about. And I'm not trying to be harsh here. I'm just trying to be realistic. However, if you do the, I don't know if you do the 36 breaths after this practice or any other form of meditation, connect with your heart. You are lovable and you are loved. The whole universe is loving us. The difficulty is our filters are often so blocked, we don't recognize it. It's okay. It's a journey. And it's up, down, up, down. I think Donovan had a song. First there is a mountain, then there is a mountain, then there is. Something like that. First there is a mountain, then there is no mountain, then there is. So the obstacle is there, then it isn't, then it is. We, we live in a, a dualistic world. But I mentioned earlier this sense of the oneness, and I, I apologize if I'm going on a little bit here, but if we go into the, the breath more and more and let go more and more, we may experience that calmness, the peace, 
which they talk about the peace that passeth all understanding, which basically means it goes beyond your mind. It's talking about the heart. Hold on to your heart. And when you're hugging yourself, tell yourself, however difficult it is, that you are lovable. Ultimately, you are love. Just begin there. Your mind may disbelieve it. It may say, no, that's not true. My experience shows me the complete opposite. That, I believe, is your mind. It is not your purest heart. So let us begin. And um, so I believe Susan mentioned, is that Susan Nietzsche? You mentioned um, needing some assistance too. So we've got Susan Alder um, and another Susan and Diana. You guys place your hands in your 15s with your arms up like that. And the rest of us, I'm glad the rest of you are still hanging on in here. <laughs> the rest of us, we're going to connect like this. You can bring your thumbs together like this, and you can imagine you're connecting to the rest of the circle that's with us. Little finger, the thumb, all the way around. Here is your ground, here is your heart. Mary said, if the thumb is out of balance, everything else is out of balance. That's the spleen energy. Boosting, bringing the sunlight into our core and the heart radiating that love, removing anxiety, try to's, just simply being and accepting and trusting who we are in this moment. So everyone in the group, let us begin jumper cabling our four friends here. Allow jumper cable energy as it enters through the solar plexus, up through our arms, through our fingers, and through the center of our palms. So, change the 26 area, all complete to radiate to our friends. Love them. Give them everything you can that's loving, compassionate. So
tonight just as when you are physically in the room doing a Jinchen Jitsu, offering a Jinchen Jitsu treatment. You know when to move on because the energy pulsation is there. And in the case of remote work, I often find, this is me, the energy begins to withdraw because the people have received, the clientele have received what they need at this particular moment in time. Okay, well, um, some of you may still want to carry on. I'm feeling the need to um, draw to a close. And just all of us just sit with the energy that we've allowed to come through us to our four friends. And just notice how you're feeling what you're feeling. I think I might have mentioned this once before. I apologize if I have repeated this, but many moons ago in the days of, I think it was World War, World War II, um, at noon each day in every country, there was this um, effort to have a minute's silence and collectively, the idea was to grow peace and harmony where there wasn't any. So that really is all reflecting back on this whole concept of support. And Diana, if there's a local Jin Shinjutsu group, study group that you can join, um, if you're not already, that's a great place to get support, yeah, um, if you can. Um, and all of us, you know, the more we can reach out. And as we've noticed, we don't have to be physically present to do it. We can be on a Zoom call because energy travels through time and space, the quantum field. There is nowhere where there isn't energy and it travels extremely fast. But the difference between the quality of what we receive and give is to do with what we what we think and therefore what we feel or what we feel and therefore what we think. So look after your heart and allow it to permeate your thinking, particularly if the thinking is, oh, I don't see a solution to this. There is a soul solution <laughs> and the soul speaks through the heart. So, Blessings to you all. Thank you, four of you. Um, did you feel anything that you want to share or was it just, um, I'd like to be in the peace? Oh, okay, Susan. I just immediately yeah. felt right in my chakra and I just had just an overwhelming feeling of gratitude because I felt immediately when you started. And uh, it's just uh, so very powerful. Thank you so much. Oh, sure. <laughs> You're very welcome. We're, we're a good gang, right? <laughs> we, got, we got some good oh, yeah, people. I felt it. We got some really, really kind people here. So that's that's wonderful that you experienced that. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to, to serve you, to share. Yeah. Honor. Diana, anything you want to say or do you just want to remain? No, I realize I'm an analytical Virgo. And when you were talking, you had so much wisdom. I'm always putting the thinking above my heart. And when I was receiving, I just felt all of this warmth around my heart. And I was so touched, I wanted to cry. So yeah. somehow to be strong, I've blocked off feeling in the heart to just try to keep pushing through all these issues. So 
Virgo, small intestine, <laughs> sister, sister pathway to the heart. And you know there. That. You're all, yes. One is yang, brings the energy up. Okay. That's the, you know, <clears throat> the heart, if you like. And the other one, sorry, no, the yang is the small intestine and the heart is the yin. One brings the energy up and the other brings it down. The heart brings it up and small intestine brings it down. You're there. You just got to switch. Bring up the, <laughs> the fire. Bring the fire there. It's okay to analyze, but it's when we get stuck in anything and we don't move through. This is the golden, um, what would you say, um, words fail me, that's okay. It, it's the core, let's leave it like that. It's the center of our being in that sense, it's the center of all our emotions and it can harmonize them all. And that's why we feel compassion there and Jin Shin Jitsu is an art of compassion. Alda, are you feeling good? Hello, no reply. <clears throat> David, you speaking on behalf of? You, you talk. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's very grateful. Thank you, Terry. Okay. I hope it um, gave us some peace. And the other Susan, how are you doing? Susan, there you go. I'm still very tired, but it was good thank you very much everybody okay well if, if you want a tip uh, maybe do a spleen flow spleen releases pressure on the kidneys and the heart and it's a secondary source of um, energy oh simple. wow yes thank you simple enough to do or hold your thumbs i will all right well bless all of you it's been an honor um to share with you as always and I'm hoping that uh, next week we may have a mystery presenter. In fact, I know we, we highly likely will have, um, but it's a mystery, right? So <laughs> we'll wait till that comes. Have a really good rest of the day, weekend, week until next Friday. And stay in your heart. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm just going to stop the recording before it just runs out.